For Unit 5, we move into the third broad area of business analytics. Remember, in the past, we've talked about descriptive analytics, and we just finished up predictive analytics, and now we're moving into the realm of prescriptive analytics. And we're going to focus on two things. We're going to focus on linear programming, that's Unit 5, and in Unit 6, we're going to relax some of the assumptions of linear programming and look at integer programming. So let's get to it. So what is linear programming? So here are a couple different definitions that, that I have scraped from uh, textbooks and other places. So let's look at them and see if it helps us understand what's going on. So the first one, a mathematical technique to help plan and make decisions relative to the trade-offs necessary to allocate resources. Okay, so it's a mathematical technique, meaning we need to use some math. Uh, to help plan and make decisions relative to trade-offs necessary. Okay, this is, a, to me, this is not a very um, specific definition. It's too broad. I mean, we looked at other mathematical techniques already that help us make decisions relative to trade-offs, right? I mean, we could look at just about anything. Even forecasting could be, could, could be considered something in this realm. So I think the first definition is too broad of a definition. So let's try the next one. A model consisting of linear relationships representing a firm's objective and resource constraints. Okay, so we have a model. Remember that for this class, what we've defined as a model is a representation of reality, an abstraction of reality, All right? Uh, where we usually make simplifying assumptions. Um, consisting of linear relationships. So let's talk about what it means to be linear. We'll do that in a few minutes representing a firm's objective and resource constraints. So a firm's objective, um, this could be any number of things. It could be maximize profit, it could be minimize cost, it could be minimize time, it could be increase efficiency, uh, increase effectiveness, increase uh, reach, if we're doing some marketing stuff. Uh, and then we have resource constraints. So first, what is a resource? And then second, what is a constraint? So a resource are things like money, time, labor, all that stuff that we have could even it could be human capital as well it could be budget all that uh, and then constraints are the things that are stopping us from doing what we want to do the things that are restricting us so this one's better uh, let's look at the next one and see if that improves or, or does anything better linear programming is a mathematical modeling technique so now we've added mathematical in front of the modeling technique Use to determine a level of operational activity in order to achieve an objective subject to restrictions called constraints. All right, so uh, it throws in the term and a level of operational activity for this. This, um, you know, many, many times linear programming is used for more operational. And when I use the term operational, I, I'm thinking more like day-to-day -day kind of decisions. Uh, more more on the ground kind of stuff rather than strategic planning out into the future you know five ten years down the road where are we gonna be that kind of stuff so it's primarily used or historically has been used for more day-to-day -day operational activity stuff however there's nothing stopping us from using it for other more strategic stuff right or more longer term kind of other ways of doing things and we have the objective again, and we have the constraints again. Uh, and then this last one, a model that seeks to maximize or minimize a linear objective function subject to a set of linear constraints. Okay, so it sounds like we've got a, a theme going on here. One is it's a model, and it's going to be a mathematical model. And then we're going to um, have objective function, what, what the goal of the thing is, the decision maker. And it has to be linear. And we're going to have constraints, restrictions on our resources. And those have to be linear. Right? So that's kind of the theme. Right? So what does it mean for a function to be linear? What are some examples? And then if it's easier, maybe think about what are some examples of nonlinear functions. So linear functions are things like, uh, it's a straight line, right? So to define a line, we need, you can do it two ways. One is you need a point and a slope. So we did this with linear regression, right? With simple linear regression. We found the intercept and we found the slope of the line. Or you need two points 
and then you can draw a straight line between them. So it means that it's, it's going up at a constant rate, right? It, it's increasing or decreasing at a constant rate. So what are some examples of nonlinear functions? Well, this would be stuff like um, uh, x squared, uh, the square root of x. It would be two variables times each other. If we had an x1 times an x2, because we're multiplying those variables, it's no longer linear. It's now quadratic. Uh, it could be sine or cosine if we get into um, other areas of math. So we have to remember that we're making because we're these things are linear that's one of our assumptions we're assuming that our if the objective function is profit we're assuming that the profit goes up at a linear fashion if we have a restriction on time we're assuming that time is eaten up in a linear fashion or used in a linear fashion and we'll get we'll, we'll talk more about those when we get it down to a few more examples so then what is a program so for this, we think of it simply as it's the output from a linear programming model that has been solved. So it, it's really a recommended course of action. That's why we're in prescriptive analytics now, because we're prescribing to the decision maker some course of action. They don't have to take our recommendations, right? The human can still override the machine, but we're still we're prescribing or recommending something. So it should also prescribe which action should be taken and be fully descriptive so that there's no missing pieces for the decision maker trying to solve whatever problem business problem that they're looking at right so there's a brief introduction to linear programming next time we'll get to some of the different uses in linear programming and get into even more fun 